welcome to the session so in this particular video we will talk about the box plot so until so far i hope that everyone is already aware about the idea that how basically we can measure the dispersion until so far i have covered up three major methods that we have seen one is the range another one is the iqr and the last one which we have covered up in our previous video is about the standard deviation and variance now moving forward now we have to see that okay there are these many ways with the help of which we can measure the dispersion in any data now the question is that if suppose i will provide you some sort of data set how will you visualize that data right visualization of data is also pretty much important and not only, not only visualization part but also we need to understand the technical aspect means what that visualization is indicating there are so many ways with the help of which you can visualize any 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 data like you can plot histogram you can plot scatter plot you can do box plot so with respect to the visualization part with respect to a uh, visualization of any data today we will just try to discuss something called as box plot which is again i am saying a very important topic why because box plot is really important to detect the outliers so the important application of this plot is that it is basically help us so box plot is pretty much useful to mainly detect the outliers so to, to detect the outliers this particular plot is quite important to understand i'll show you the practical demonstration as well but before that we need to understand logically right how basically this box plot will be created how will it 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 decide the lower and the upper value and beyond that that will be considered as a box uh, sorry outlier so let's get started in a box plot the very first thing which you need to determine is the value of a iqr because you need to calculate what is the lower whisker and upper whisker of a box plot lower whisker means what is the lower or the minima range in a plot and what is the maxima range beyond that range you will consider the all the data points as the outlier so basically when you calculate the lower whisker whenever you will calculate the lower whisker in a box plot the formula will be equals to q1 minus 1.5 times the value of iqr that's why i am saying iqr plays a very important role if someone is not having an idea what is interquartile range or iqr i would suggest please go uh, in the playlist and see i already have clearly explained this concept of iqr with the help of one example and i demonstrated the calculation as well right and the upper whisker value in the box plot is something which is equals to q3 plus 1.5 times of the value of iqr right whenever i am saying iqr it is something which is interquartile range and the formula to calculate iqr is the value of q3 minus the value of q1 what is q3 and q1 by the way q3 is something which we called as 75th percentile number okay and q1 is something which we are saying is a 25th percentile value i hope now you all know that what is the difference between percentile and percentage and how we mainly evaluate the value of 75th percentile or 25th percentile and whenever we say median median is something which is equals to q2 which i will always say is nothing but a 50th percentile right very important to understand now i have again taken a question where first of all we need to determine what is the value of iqr then only we will be able to understand okay this is the lower whisker this is the upper whisker right so for that we need to see what is the value of q2 first so here if you will observe we will be having 15 data points so obviously if you left seven data points i believe on the left 
and seven data points on the right this is something which you can say is a q2 value now q1 is something so this q2 is 50th percentile q1 is 25th it means that i will go towards the left side and will pick the middle one so here if you will see 46 is the next middle one so it is something which i am saying is a q1 similarly for q3 if you will observe you will go to the right side and find find out the middle one which is 56 here right so here if you will observe the value of q1 is something which i am getting as 46 the value of q2 which i am getting here as 50 and the value of q3 is something which i am getting as 56 now if i'll say to you what is the value of iqr i believe you can easily tell to me it is nothing but is equals to q3 minus q1 which is equals to 56 minus 46 which is equals to 10. so now we will be able to get that okay the value of iqr is 10. now with the help of that you can clearly able to understand what is the value of a lower whisker so the value of lower whisker is something which is equals to q1 what is the value of q1 q1 value is 46 minus 1.5 times of the value of iqr which is 10 so it is something which is equals to 46 minus 15 which is equals to 31 similarly i can calculate what is the value of upper whisker which is the upper upper value upper range which is equals to q3 which is 56 plus 1.5 times of the value of iqr so again it is equals to 56 plus i would say 15 which is equals to 71 it means it means please try to understand this part that the value which is less than i would say 31 and the value which is greater than 71 is a part of outlier it means if i'll ask from you what are the outliers you can say this is an outlier you can say this is an outlier this is an outlier so in general i can say that there are total three outliers present inside my data can i say so basically when we are talking about a box plot box plot is something which contains majorly five components so if i'll try to construct to you with you so here if you will observe this is something which is a box plot so it is in the shape of a box only i will demonstrate you also here if you will observe this is q1 sorry this is q1 lower range this is q2 which is the median and this is q3 and then here you will be having the value of lower and the upper whisker what is q1 in our case q1 is something which is equals to 46 what is q2 in our range in our our question q2 is 50 so it is 50 what is q3 it is 56 what is the value of lower whisker the value of lower whisker is something which i will say is uh, 31 and the value of upper whisker is something which is i will say is 71 it means it means you will observe that if there exists some point for example 5 was there in my data this is an outlier if exists some point above 71 for example 75 was there in my data for example 105 was there in my data all these red points which i am demonstrated here is a part of an outlier so if someone will ask you in an interview that how will you able to detect any outlier in a data now i hope you know two ways one way which we already discussed in the previous part of the video where we have talked about the standard thumb off rule do you remember where i talked to you that when the value of z is greater than three in that case there is a high probability that outlier is there right within one standard deviation we have studied how much percentage is there within two how much within three how much so we have seen that within three standard deviation the value is 99.7 percent it means that if i'll go beyond three in z score value in z value it means that there is a high chance of an outlier second way we have discussed in today's session where we have talked about box plot where we have seen that if the value goes beyond the lower and the upper whisker 
there is a high chance that outlier is there. Make sense? Now, if I demonstrate you the same thing, do you remember that descriptive stats example which I have shown to you? Do you remember? So in this descriptive stats, I will try to extend this, this particular code itself. Here if you will see what I did here, I just import all the required libraries first. After that, I pick up the data set which is diabetes data, data that I have. After that, we have seen in the last sessions that in order to pick up the topmost five records, there is a head function which is there. So I just use that function. If you can see here, we will be having features. There are a lot of features which we have started starting from pregnancy to the age. And the last feature was something which is an outcome, which indicates that, okay, on the basis of these features which I have, either the person is diabetic or a person will not a diabetic means either the value is one or it is zero okay then we have seen in the last particular sessions that when we are using a describe function we will be able to get a descriptive statistics part of a data for example here you can see the count is there the mean is there the standard deviation is there the minimum value is there the 25 percentile portion is there 50 percentile portion is there 75 percentile portion is there the maximum value present in a given feature it's there right then we have seen to detect any null value inside my data there is a function called is null and we will sum that to detect that how many total number of null values are there that's also fine now the important thing here to understand is how we can create a box plot so there exists a seaborne library you can just directly import that library which is import seaborne as sns and to plot that, you will use a matplotlib uh, library package. Here, if you can see, I'm just calling that sns.boxplot to create a box plot of my data. And here, I am defining my fixed size, which is 20 cross 20. Now, here if I will just run this code. You will be easily able to understand that here, this is something which I'm talking about a box plot. Can you see that these are the features that we have? If I'll just do one thing here, maybe I can just plt dot save fig and maybe I can say it's a box plot dot png. Let me try to run this. I think now the image will get also get saved. Let me just try to refresh my thing. It should be there. Let me try to check once. Yes, boxplot.png. See, now it's there, right? So in this way, you can also save the image. Now I hope the image is clearly visible to everyone, right? Here, if you can see, for every feature, for every feature, you will be able to have a box plot. And you can clearly observe, for every feature, you should have the five components. This is something, I hope everyone can see my cursor. This is something which is the value of a lower whisker. This is something which is the value of Q1. This middle line is something which is a value of Q2, median. This upper line is something which is a value of upper whisker Q3. And this upper heading is something which is a line of a upper whisker. So again, I am saying a box plot contains five components. And can you say, can you see that this, this outside these values, this is, this is something which I am, I am saying is a outlier. Why? Because these lines are beyond the lower and the upper whisker. That's why we are seeing this line as an outlier. So in this way, for any given data, for any given feature, you will be easily able to create a box plot using that Seabone library. And you can easily see that which particular feature contains a high range of outliers. And then we will see in the upcoming part of the videos that how basically we can treat those outliers. For example, here you can see in insulin, there is a lot of outliers, right? Means this feature is something which is heavily filled with the outli outliers and we need to treat that. By the way, we already have discussed what outliers all about. I hope I'm making sense, right? Outliers is something I would say an exceptional value in a given set of data points that we have. For example, if I will say to you that, okay, do a survey where try to find out the salary of a data scientist as a fresher. Now you did, you did a survey, you find out that some, some people in the range of 25 to 30 
as a data scientist are earning maybe 1 lpa per month some are earning maybe 2 lpa per month but there is some person who is earning 1 cr per month 1 cr per month it means this is something which is an exception as comparable to other data points that you have taken this is something which you will treat as an outlier which will really impact my result so there should be an appropriate way first of all to detect that outlier that is what we have studied in our today's session which is you know with the help of a box plot we can do that secondly if we will be able to detect that then there should be a separate way to deal with that either we should remove them or basically if we are not removing them because that also contains some important valuable information so removal is also not is also not an very optimized way so second thing is that how basically we can treat those outliers right that we will discuss in our upcoming sessions but the meaning of outlier is i hope everyone knows until now so this is all about which i want to discuss in the today's part of the video if you still have any sort of doubt do let me know in the comment section right and my humble request is please 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 hit like button if you really uh, understood the content which i am giving as a stats videos as a stats playlist because if you hit the like button subscribe the channel then obviously it will reach to more audience and as it's a educational ch educational channel right you also know that reach is not that much high as comparable to other channels where vlogging or those stuffs will be there so my humble request is this only that please try to grow this channel with me it's my humble request right because i am doing my hard work according to giving the valuable content according to giving the content which is really helpful to you all see i faced a lot of problems when i was studying these concepts and i spent a lot of time right moreover i am i, I was lucky enough that i will i am fortunate enough i would say that i will be able to get that that, that kind of mentors in my life uh, with the help of which i will be able to get uh, gain a lot of insightful things right whether it be a part of iit and whether it be a part of my jit so the thing which i want to give here with the help of this channel is that i want to convey whatever knowledge or experience i have to you all that's the only uh, i would say reason of creating this youtube channel so please hit like button please share this video to everyone whosoever is in need of this particular kind of a content right if you think if you really think right it's a genuine request so if you think that the content is valuable then do that if you think no it's it's available everywhere it's it's not that much a big deal which i am doing here then i think that's of no use right so uh with this i would like to end this particular video in the next upcoming part of the video we will discuss more topics for the same stats portion and for sure i'll try to complete the stats playlist and then only we will start looking for the machine learning algorithms and there we will discuss the mathematical intuition of every algorithm so stay tuned with me and uh, happy learning to all bye bye everyone and i'll see you all in my next upcoming video